Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Mario and Luigi, Partners in Time. Previously, we took down the Shroop Mothership in what was a rough battle. I'll be frank, I don't think I can really save face for that performance. But it was just barely enough to bring it down to our level. Now, we take the fight to Princess Shroob. But before we go onward, I want to take one final look at who else but... The Quartet. We are level 29 across the board. I thought I'd probably be level 30 by this point, but 29 is a good level. I'm very content with where I am. And for the final equipment that I settled on. Baby Luigi still has the lucky badge. Baby Mario still has the lucky badge A. I stuck with this because it kind of averages out their chances of getting lucky hits because Baby Luigi has the naturally higher stash stat. And with Baby Mario having the lower, I figured giving him the more powerful of the two badges would be the way to go. There is only one lucky badge A out there. So I figured that this is how I wanted to equip the babies as we're going to be fighting as a group of four. The baby's health and defensive stats aren't going to matter too much as they're just going to be around to revive the bros and get lucky hits whenever we do multi hit attacks. Mario is wearing the dynamic badge A, something that we have not used up to this point. As a recap, it quadruples the cost of bros attacks, but does greatly increase damage. I wanted to have this on the team somewhere. Luigi has the ulti free badge so that he can use his bros attacks for free. You might not want to do that. Maybe you want to have the dynamic badge on him or just on whoever doesn't have the A badge of the, of, <laughs> the, A badge of the dynamic. Now I'm talking like Fawful. Got to channel him in this final battle, I guess. Um, that will give you more damage output, but I didn't want to mill through my inventory very fast because six uses of an item in one turn could end up being a lot. And if I rely on something a lot like the copy or multi-flowers, I wouldn't want to potentially run out of those. So to save on the cost, I did that. I also decided that I wanted the higher cost, higher damage to be on the bro that would move first and the free attacks to be on the bro that would move second for reasons that you will see, of course, momentarily. I think with that, we're good. And I finally closed the menu with the start button shortcut that I praised all the way back at the start of this adventure when it was explained to us and then proceeded to not use for the last several days of this adventure. I guess now that I've done it, though, it means we've come full circle. Let's dive right in. Oh, Mario! Luigi! Thank you so. The mothership's impact knocked out the barrier! Princess Shroob! Now you've done it! You're useless now, Peach! Time to finish you! You cannot escape! This kingdom is mine! I will destroy you all! Destroy! Here it is! Princess Shroob begins the fight with a barrier up! Because of course she does! This barrier is not destroyed based on damage done, but on number of hits. As a result, I don't want to spend four times the cost to not damage her. So instead, I want to lay down red peppers at some point in this fight. We'll do it on Mario's first turn, just so it's done. There we are! Ooh, love my spicy foods. Now, Luigi, I would like to destroy that barrier for free. Thank you very much. Might as well neutralize that. If she gets it automatically, let's automatically destroy it. So let's do the tried and true copy flowers. And while I'm doing this, Listen to this phenomenal music. Ah, uh, just barely didn't do it, but it was just barely enough to destroy it. Yes, okay, we're good. When she is grounded, she'll attack you more one-on-one. -on -one. She's able to attack using these energy balls. She's going for the back, gonna go for Luigi, and we counter-attack her, knocking her out of the attack prematurely. Princess Shroob's main gimmick is that she attacks using debuffs. As such, those balls are capable of inflicting poison. I would recommend avoiding that if possible. And you know what? For sake of variety, let's do the trampolines, because I need to right a wrong with this attack. 
I thought that this attack had a damage cap of 999, but it turns out it does not. You are capable of doing quad damage, uh, quad digit damage with it, which we might be seeing here with our greatly increased damage from the badge we have equipped. Funnily, the reason why I thought it had a damage cap was because one time I did really, really well with it, and by pure random chance, I just so happened to do exactly 999 damage with it, so. I think you can kind of see why I thought that was the case. I thought it was funny, wanted to share that with you. Luigi, on your turn, you know what? She's a shrew. We should do the ice flowers, right? Right? Oh, I see. Just because she's a shrew, you think she's weak to ice. That's racist. Don't think like that. As far as I'm aware, she can't even get debuffed by the Ice Flowers. I've never seen it work in all of the attempts that I have done, so don't try that. Uh, also, don't get poisoned. That's pretty bad. There we go. Knocked her out of it on the second try. Not really that hard to deal with that attack, though, but... Um, I don't want to waste my potential quad damage here, so let's, uh, let's do another bros attack on Mario's turn. Let's do Smash Eggs. I love this attack. I want to get in as many different bros attacks as possible, considering that they just gave us a bunch of the bros items. Ouch. Okay. Um, maybe I'll stick with the duplication attacks. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll uh, not do that. Maybe I'll use the refreshing herb on Luigi's turn as not to waste the damage output that Mario would be able to do, because I definitely don't want to have poison going off every turn. Her barrier regenerates, and now we get to see what kinds of things she does in this. This attack can be rather dangerous. She... Gets this really funny looking spider walker, goes over to a bro, launches these lasers that can inflict trip on you, and then she comes down and you gotta hammer her. She laughed, she's gonna fake us out, there we go! And I don't know why when she runs away in the walker it just looks really funny to me. <laughs> she is capable of inflicting dizzy on you when she sits on you, it is very unpleasant, I would recommend uh, not having that happen. I was sparing last time, but I kind of want to not waste my uh, red peppers and get her out of that barrier as quick as possible, so let's go for the copy flowers in Mario's turn. Which we've already done, so why am I talking about it in the future tense? Why can't I be that good at the attack when it actually does damage? I entered a zen-like state right there and was just doing it like nuts, man. Uh, Luigi, what about your turn? Uh, what do we got? Uh, hmm. I kind of want to give the trampoline another go. Uh, how about cannonballers? Let's try that. Oh, four luckies! 480 damage. Cannonballers is that one attack that does just enough damage, but is just easy enough to pull off that it feels good to do right after you mess up a bros attack and you just want to do good damage without having the chance to mess it up. Here she's in a berserk mode. She's doing a sweep fire, which is based on the direction that she waves her hand. I kind of did it backwards there, but I was fine anyway. Shooting star attack gets faster on each pass, so it's good that I knocked it out right away. When she gets low in health, she enters this berserk mode. She will do a lot of attacks per turn, so we probably want to knock her out pretty quickly to be on the safe side. Trampolines it is. Even though I spent a good chunk of my life thinking this attack had a damage cap on it, I still thought it was an awesome attack even when I thought that was the case. There was a reason why I was suggesting that you still try it out back in the Star Shrine, but now that on top of my existing feelings for it, I know that it doesn't have a damage cap, Trampoline, I think this is going to be the beginning of a beautiful relationship that's going to last one battle. How'd we do? Did I get quad? Oh, wow! 1132! 1132! That is awesome! You know what? You're probably pretty low on health. Let's, uh... Oh, gosh. Uh... Let's go for a red shell. Just get as high of a combo as we can. And uh, I apparently didn't even need that much. Probably two more hits on the trampoline and that would have been it. We must hurry and escape this place.
Look, that... That's the almost whole cobalt star you've been looking for. Yeah. Look, Mario. I have the final shard right here. With this piece, the cobalt star will regain its original shape. Oh yeah. But I cannot allow that to happen. If you thought I'd given up on getting my treasure back, you're dumber than you look! All the time I spent hiding and waiting is gonna pay off in a big, big way! I'm taking all the treasures for myself! They're all mine! Now it's your turn. Sister. What's going on? With an exclamation point for some reason. Oh. Oh no. That cobalt star shard, there was... There was another shrewd princess inside it. That's right, Princess Shroob has a twin sister. <laughs> when I arrived in this time period, Princess Shroob immediately attacked me. I instantly grabbed the time machine's power source, the Cobalt Star, and... Yes. I trapped Princess Shrub inside it, then shattered it. It was then that the younger Shrub Princess surprised and captured me. Uh-huh. Gathering all of the Cobalt Star Shards gave the elder Princess Shrub all of her power back. I laugh at you, mushroom heads. Pathetic things. You gathered the Cobalt Star Shards without ever guessing the truth. Now I am free. And that horrible, horrible Cobalt Star is no more. I fear nothing now. Do you hear me? Nothing! No. So the identity of the Star Sprite we spoke to up on Star Hill. It was actually the Shrewd Princess who was trapped inside it. Travesty! I will give you a special reward for setting me free. You will love it! And my sister, my dear sweet beautiful sister, I will avenge her! The real fight begins! So, I love how this was foreshadowed! I thought this was very clever, how the star sprite up on top of Star Hill looked legitimately good, very sweet, yet baby Luigi cried when he saw it, foreshadowing what was actually going on. I like that quite a bit. Some might have thought it was obvious what was going on with the sketch when it was revealed that there was another one like Princess Shrew, but first time through, I didn't see it coming. I mean, I had a feeling the Cobalt Star was not going to be something good in the end, but... I didn't see it coming exactly what it was, and I love how it was set up. Starting off with some ice flowers, she actually can be debuffed by them even though she's not weak to them. Here, Peach is sending us a star right here to deal with these UFOs. We're gonna use a reticle, Ollie Yoshi's Island, and miss entirely. That was really bad, okay. She attacks using her UFO army, and she will have more attacks available to her the more that she, wow, okay, that was really bad. She shoots out of each hand. That's gonna go, oh, uh, okay, that goes up, up, and then she goes back. Okay, what I was trying to say is that she has loads of different attacks, like a zillion of them. I might exaggerate numbers a lot, but I'm only just barely exaggerating in this case. 
She has a gigantic move set and has more attacks available to her based on how many UFOs are currently present. It's kind of a clever way of fighting how she uses her army to fight. Um, as a result of this, there is no way in heck that we're going to see all of her attacks in just one run through. I also kind of wonder where all those clones are running off to to the left, but I won't question it if it means making the fight better for us. I hit boy, I felt myself a second too late. Still did over a thousand damage though, that was not bad. Luigi, on your turn, she has defense down. I could stand for maybe getting another debuff on her. It's really weird how the younger Shrew Princess seems immune to debuffs as far as I can tell, but I never have trouble inflicting them on the elder one. There that goes, I heard some debuff go off. Wasn't the best usage of that attack. Got two, so we'll hit that. Basically, man, I can, okay, I'd like to do this successfully at least once. Uh, here, she's using a chain chomp. This one only requires one UFO to do. It goes after a certain Mario, Brook there. Come on, nope. All right, didn't jump on it. You can jump on it to counterattack it. I just missed a few times there. She can be pretty hard. She has a lot of health. She does a lot of damage. And uh, well, I think that in and of itself makes for a difficult fight. I think I'm gonna go, uh, let's go for a red shell. Ah, didn't quite get it. 612 damage, if I had pulled that up a little bit better, I think it could have gone well. Uh, Luigi, what do I want to do for free on your turn? Uh, trampoline, let's go for it. Fifty-four damage with one hit from the baby. Six fifty-nine. Here we get another shot with the star. Please let me actually do this right this time. There, I knocked one of them out of the sky. Basically, you have to fail the action commands to see some of her more advanced moves that require more UFOs. There she is going into the uh, sky again. That's Luigi. That's Mario. Luigi. Mario. Now she's going into the background. Going up. Going down. Going up. And that's that. Did it perfectly. Redeemed myself a little bit, except for the last hit, which only did seven and eight damage respectively. So maybe that's not too bad. Uh, let's uh, let's do the smash eggs. I only have six of these left, though. So this is my last chance to do it as Mario, or a uh, second to last chance to do it as Mario. So let's try it. I'm just trying to squeeze in every bros attack that I can. And when that's the case, why would I leave out such an oldie but a goodie? See, your old bros attacks are more viable than you think they are. And thank you for that trampoline smash eggs. My love for you has not waned after all this time. Now, what, would, what is it I want to do? Uh, haven't done mixed flowers yet. I think I am going to go for copy flowers once more. truly listening to this song unless it has the roar at the beginning. Holy hell, this does not sound like a boss theme from the Mario universe. It's otherworldly as it should be. Starting off, she has seven, count them, seven targets on her body. Of course, let's get that count down a little bit by using our mixed flowers. This is why I was saving them. Here we go. Boom, 702 damage. You can knock out her limbs, and on top of that, she is getting protection from the crown on her head. I think, oh, how do I want to go about this? I knocked out all the limbs fine. Let's just get that crown offline right away. Let's go for the cannonballers. 
I hope that it does not count as a spiked enemy. If it does, I'm going to be very upset in a moment. Crowns are that inconsistent thing. They sometimes are counted as spiked enemies, sometimes they're not. There it is. Her crown is turned off. As was the case during the mixed flowers, she only takes one damage from any hit as long as her crown is protecting her. Now she's shooting down her own troops to get rid of us. Fire is Mario, lightning is Luigi. Did you catch the reference? You can do a lot of counterattack damage there, and now that she's vulnerable, I guess once again, let's bust out the trampoline. We might not be able to inflict Dizzy with it, but I still want to give it as much love as I can. Say that right as I mess up right in the vital moment. You only get a few turns to damage her. You can only hurt her when her crown is down. So I want to make the most of this, and I definitely did not do that. Luigi, on your turn, let's activate the red peppers. These do wear off after only a few turns, so with how long this fight can go on for, it can require you to put it back up every now and again. Luigi Mario, Luigi Mario, got it. Always have trouble with that first hit. And there go her limbs back. Uh, timing on that is very unforgiving when it's close to Mario because it starts out so close to him. Uh, we're still gonna have Mario do the Mixed Flower on his turn so we don't miss out on the high damage, and then Luigi can spend his turn healing. That was pretty good! 828. Eight. Looks like we did 999 to her as well. That was very good. That, has a, that does have a damage cap on it. Some of the bros attacks do, for clarification. Said I'd have you heal, and with all the stories that I have told you throughout this entire quest, all the experiences that I had playing this growing up, they've all been leading up to something. This fight. This fight was the ultimate terrible childhood experience for me, and it's because of everything I've told you up to this point. Combine this fight with only upping HP on every level up, with N only visiting equipment shops three times in the entire game because I wasn't aware that Peach's castle restocked with new items. With not knowing that Fawful was in the game, so I was missing a lot of the better badges out there. With not using bros attacks in anything that wasn't a boss fight because I didn't want to potentially not have enough to beat the bosses. Which was especially a big sin in this game because it meant that I wasn't practiced on the action commands and thus only doing a little more than a regular attack whenever I actually did them. This fight took me over three hours to win. Her and I were in a virtual stalemate because she had so much dang health, I had so much dang health, and we were just in this virtual tie where we could barely output a whole lot of damage to each other. I was dodging all of her attacks perfectly because I'd seen them so many dozens of times, and it just never ended. And not only that, it was only my third attempt that did it. My first attempt, I fought for an hour and I lost because I ran out of one-ups. My second attempt, I went for an hour and a half and my battery died, which was a huge blow to me wanting to finish this as a kid. And yeah, in total, I spent almost six hours on this fight. To date, it's the longest time I've ever spent fighting a final boss in a video game. And as you can imagine, in my teen years, I hated this fight and thought it was the most overly long boss fight in any game ever. Now I appreciate it a lot more. I appreciate it being actually hard. Um, I actually do prefer it having double the health in the North American release. I think that's part of the challenge personally. Maybe someone who grew up elsewhere wouldn't agree, but I like it that way. And just the atmosphere of this fight, I love. The fact that we're up in the sky right now as we're fighting her. The fact that phase one against Elder Princess Shroop was her commanding an army to fight you, which was very unique up to that point. And now that it's gotten desperate, she's using her troops as cannon fodder, shooting them down to take us out. That's desperation. And I think that just the atmosphere to this fight, it's very somber, and it honestly feels a little sad for the shrooms. I, I like that a lot. But getting back to the battle at hand, we gotta do something for our attack. You know what? If you count the two different shells as the same attack and the two different flowers as the same attack, pocket chomps is the only thing left. I didn't want to use you, and I can't even do the advanced command because she counts technically as a flying enemy. In fact, let's try it right here. 
Yeah, straight up misses. Can't do that. So, maybe it's not the best move to use in this situation, but I've represented dang near everything else. Why the heck not? I was really hoping she would go down to the chomp, to the pocket chomp. That would be really funny if she did. All right, six UFOs. She's definitely getting lower in health because her attacks are getting even more aggressive. Luigi Mario, Luigi Mario, Luigi Mario. Okay, not bad. Ah, dang. screwed that up right at the very end. I think we've given everything its own representation, so at this point, I'm just gonna do whatever I like best. I wanted to get in every bros attack that I could. Here we go. Pfft. Oh my, 96, 96. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Foolish mushroom heads. You may have bested me, but shrooms will live on. One day the shrooms will dance on the buried remains of this pathetic kingdom. Ha! Foolish mushroom head. Look who's talking. Mario, Luigi, thank you. Thanks to you, the Mushroom Kingdom of this time is safe. I am so very, truly pleased. <laughs> These poison mushrooms, how shall we be rid of them? The foul work of the shrooms still covers our land. Ah, the mushroom! Could it be baby's tears? <laughs> the hydro gush. Please tell me that thing is not full of baby's tears. <laughs> And thus, everyone in the land became horrible, terrible parents for the sake of saving the world. <laughs> just... Maybe this is the event that caused Luigi to just be crapped on his whole life, that they had to make him cry that many tears somehow to save the world or something. Just... I'm sorry, I find this oddly morbid. <laughs> The liquid the Hydro Gush is spouting has the same chemical makeup as the baby's tears. Spraying it across the kingdom ought to cure all those shrewd mushrooms. I am plum astounded. The fearsome shrewds laid low by baby tears. My treasure. Prince Bowser, please let it go. Okay, so it's not as morbid as it looks at first, but I do like how they at least lead you to believe that it is that for a few moments before clarifying. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Why look, even the time machine's completely restored. I've engineered it to run off of energy from the time holes. 
Professor, did it work? What's happened? Yep. As soon as I got the information from Stuffwell, I put our plan into action. The rain of baby tears hit the shroob shrooms, and they melted immediately. Success! And that takes care of every last trace of nastiful shrooms! Happies! Yep, and it's time to head back to our proper place in time. The Toadsworths must be beside themselves with worry. So much cleaning. Actually, there's something interesting to see here in the castle. Don't worry, you can come by later. You can find me in my usual location, fellers. Princess! Oh, my dear princess, you're safe at last! Thank you. We owe Mario and the babies a great debt. Princess, please come this way! Mario, welcome home! You're the best, Mario! It was you after all, Mario! Way to go, Mario! Yeah, Mario! Welcome back! Good work, Luigi. <laughs> yeah. It was nice of you to go into the past to greet Mario, but you know you can't shirk your house sitting duties! <laughs> Just kidding. Welcome back, Luigi! Ready, set... Hey, Luigi! Welcome back! Yeah. You must all be so tired! Please come this way! Please stop talking, Toads. I don't know how much my throat and, and your ears can take of it. <laughs> well, here we are. They're just all going to mindless be all- Go to the next room, okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go, go, go to the next- uh, Let me talk to you. Yeah, go to the next room, okay? Go to the next room, okay? Oh, have a visitor up- okay, there is a visitor up ahead. You at least say something different though, but they're all just mindless clones that are just like, go to the next room, go to the next room, go to the next room. So, we get the picture, we will go to the next room. Oh, you saved the princess and the kingdom. Well done, dear fellers. Master Mario, Master Luigi, young Master Mario, young Master Luigi. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for rescuing our Princess Peach. Please come this way, sirs. There's a favor I must ask of all of you. Now at long last, I must bid farewell to my younger, exuberant self. Humph. <laughs> it's as if you can't wait to be rid of me, you old toad. Yes! Er, uh, what an overactive imagination you possess! <laughs> Will someone please tell me how this happened? Apparently, he fell from up high and landed in a time hole. Then he just plopped into the castle's backyard. Yeah, since then, he's just lain there like a lump. Master Mario, is there nothing you can do? Perhaps jump on him or some such thing? Hmm. Ah, baby Luigi. What is that grotesque mushroom? I can feel a power burning in my belly! What in the world did you feed me? Aw, <laughs> oh, who cares what it was? I've been reborn! <laughs> Mario! Green Stash! And you brats too! No mercy for you! It seriously is not over yet! Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking about this, but... We have the ghost of Princess Shrew manifesting herself... any second now. She has that many hits. Hey, listen here! From now on, you guys get no chance to attack! I'm gonna flatten you with an attack barrage, baby! Enjoy! Fwaha! 
You can only damage her by counterattacking Bowser's hits. Princess Shrew will telegraph on the top screen who is going to be hit next by the attacks. And this... I don't get it at all why they did this. Just why? If you lose this battle, instant game over. You go back to the fight with the younger Princess Shrew. I'm not kidding. You really do. If you die at the same time as Bowser, game over. If you kill Bowser, but the attack wave isn't over yet and the rest of the attack wave playing out kills you, game over. It's really dumb. I have never personally lost this fight. It's just 20 hits to deal with, but you know out there, some kid struggled on that fight for three plus hours like I did and then got all the way to the end and then lost. I know that this had to have happened to at least somebody, and it must have been the most unpleasant thing in the world. I don't see any good that could have come of adding this fight at all. It just feels so unnecessary. If you're curious at all because you never get to actually target him, this boss's name officially is Shrouser, even though it's never shown in the game personally. I just think it sounds like Shower, but I, I don't know. So it's gonna go... I didn't see who the first one was. Uh, looks like Mario. No, it's Luigi. This is Mario. I'm missing a lot here. This is kind of bad. I'm not really that low in health. See, it's not like... I personally don't consider it that challenging, but I just feel like it was a bit much, because the last battle would have been an awesome final fight. And I don't get why they took that away from it. It was a good boss fight. Both phases of Elder Princess Shroop was amazing. I don't know. I don't mean to be such a damper on this, I just know that this is not really a widely liked thing that they did, and I can definitely see why I sympathize with people on this one. Wow, I am... Can I hit the last... My god! Wow, I don't find this that hard. Maybe I should actually be quiet and concentrate for a moment. Okay, that's that. That's it. You do still have the babies of safety net even though you can't use items. That's it. And I gotta say it, what is it with this series and final bosses going inside Bowser? Elder Toadsworth, we've had our share of disagreements, but now that the time is nigh, I find it rather difficult to say farewell. Younger me, please take good care of the little princess. Ah, baby Princess Peach, leave me with a smile for, for the final time. Toad! Toadsworth twist! I'm gonna miss the two Toadsworths. This is a character interaction you don't ever get to see at any other point, and it was a high point of this for me. Baby Mario, baby Luigi, thank you for rescuing me and saving the kingdom. Please look after my younger self and young Toadsworth. She understands. Is everyone almost ready? <laughs> Don't cut this short, Egad! It was so cute! My dear Princess Peach, you've grown so beautiful. I'm honored to have met you. And Master Mario, Master Luigi, thanks ever so much. Do continue to take care of the princess.
Younger me, keep your chin up. Babies, thank you. And that is Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. Which kinda came and went. This went a lot faster than I thought it would. It's still a great game for me. I can definitely see why it is considered the black sheep of the Mario and Luigi series. When you're a very early release on a system that not a lot of people owned at the time and you're released within a couple months of not only Mario Kart DS, but also Animal Crossing Wild World, it's kind of a recipe for getting overshadowed in that way. And I think also the fact that it came out the next year after Thousand Year Door, a lot of people had very through the roof expectations for a new Mario RPG, but honestly, I think this is a game that has a surprisingly good story for a Mario title. It is oozing with personality and is more about the moments for me where it just has so many little cute moments that are so nice to just go back and think about. They make you go aw over again when you see them a second time. I like that about it. I can understand some people maybe not liking it being more linear than an RPG because it really is that you kind of jump into portals in the Peach's Castle hub world and then you go to the end of a stage and you collect your star shard. It's a little bit like Mario 64 and how it's laid out, I guess, if not with much bigger areas though. I can see some people not liking that and oh my god, that person's name is Ono's. I know it's Ono's save, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I can't help myself sometimes. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, I initially wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with the Mario and Luigi series because it had been a long time since I'd played Partners in Time all the way back when I did Superstar Saga, but upon replaying Partners in Time, I was like, no. I want to show people what this game means to me. I want to remind them of maybe some of the better qualities that don't get talked about as much, because I was surprised by just how much better it was than people made it sound over the years in conversation. Um, but I don't mean to be super negative about this. I think that aside from the Schrauser fight, that is a very solid final boss fight, a very good finale to this grand adventure, and the best part of it for me was seeing people who said that they'd never even heard of this game and thought Bowser's Inside Story was the second game in the series, and saying that they were getting very involved in the story and the characters and the music especially. Seriously. This game's soundtrack is one of the best Mario soundtracks that people don't talk about. Get the word out there more to listen to Partners in Time music. <laughs> That's not all, though. I'll see you back here fairly soon for the bonus video, where we're going to be seeing everything that we haven't seen. Boss moves, various little tiny things that there wasn't just really a good place to talk about. Those kinds of things. All that and a lot more. Then I'll see you back here after that for some more promised bonus videos from Let's Plays of Old. And then again, after that, for a return to a place we have not seen in a long time. See you guys then. Thank you for watching. Oh man, I still wanted to see Toadsworth worrying at 11.